Um, what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how you can use just some basic shapes and then work with animation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is start by building a shape. So shape is a function that you can use in Isadora to just kind of get basic animations going. You can use images, you can use whatever you like, really, in the same animation elements are going to make sense, shifting images. You'll see when we get through it. So the first thing I'm going to do is look up shapes. And there we have our little shapes menu. Now, of course, we can't see that. So I'm going to then add a projector. Now I'll connect the shape to the projector. And now we have a shape. So if you look on the screen, you'll see that I've got it currently at the small screen that we've got, the small display in the studio. Now, if I switch this to stage two, now it's on the projection. And if I put it onto stage three, it's on the little screen with me here. So we're gonna keep it on the main projection screen. So now, we can actually work to change the shape into whatever we like. Now, <clears throat> there are different kinds of shapes you can use, rectangles, polygons, um, sort of ovals. Well, really, it's just a three. <laughs> so uh, we can work with that to make it a little bit different. Here, we're just going to use a rectangle. And I'm going to show you how you can then customize this rectangle to look like exactly what you want it to look like as a rectangle. So right now we've got a lovely square, and we're just going to change that. So it's pretty intuitive. There's width and there's height, so we change the width. We can see that the minimum here is zero, the maximum is 200. So that means that the actual width of the whole thing can be either zero to 200, anything in there. And right now we're at 25. We know what that looks like. So. Let's just click here and we'll change the width. And as you can see, it's getting wider. So we can make this any size we want. So let's go with that. And height, let's make it a little bit taller. So it's kind of like this dividing line on the stage. Now, using the shapes, you can also change the color. Should you want, you just click here and it will bring up a little color wheel can make it whatever color you like. So now we've got a yellow uh, or possibly a green. I actually can't see color very well. Uh, so this is probably a bit more of a blue. And here you're actually seeing that there's a difference. You're seeing the line color too. So line color here can also be changed. You've got two color options, fill color and line color. And you can make this whatever color you like to give you whatever feel you're going for. So I'm going to reset them both to white, just because it bounces very well on the wall there. So that's the basic element of how we'll use a shape. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make this shape do something. And in order to make the shape do something and move on to animation, it just requires us changing variables. So. The variables are these things here, um, the horizontal position, the vertical position. We can also change the width, the height. We can make it grow. We can make it smaller, um, like I was just doing here. And I'll just show you again. If I click on the width, we could set up an animation that constantly is doing this, for example, if we wanted to. That would just mean changing the width. Uh, likewise, we could do that to change the height. We could do it to change the position. So in this case, we're going to use a generator to build a continuous animation so that we can just let this thing go. Use it as a bit of an effect. So I'm going to pull up what's called a wave generator. And you can see in this wave generator that goes by a certain frequency, you can select the kind of wave you want. I'm working with a sine wave here, but there are other options. And you can adjust the frequency here and it outputs a value. Now the thing about the sine wave is that this is going to go up and then it comes down. So if I were to take this and simply connect this value point over to say 
the horizontal position. Now we've got this effect happening on stage. So it's happening very quickly. So how do we adjust this? We're just going to work with the frequency. So rather than a one hertz frequency, we're going to bring it down and lower and lower still. And we're still getting lower until it starts to be a little bit more manageable. Now, you might not want to have this much of a pause going on, and there's a reason that this is happening. So we have to then look at exactly how far it can really go. So this will go from negative 200 to positive 200. And that's the whole position. So what you're seeing on the screen is this line is traveling across. Here it goes. It's traveling across, and it's actually going twice the length of the entire screen before it starts to come back. If we wanted to make this a little bit more uh, of an immediate process, then what we could do is simply change the scale. So as we mentioned before, Isadora works with scales and with percentages. So this is negative 200 to 200. So if we just change this to negative 100 to 100, now what we're going to see is that it simply is going from one side to the other. Now, of course, it's disappearing off the screen. And that's because it only goes so far. If we want to make it not disappear off the screen, we'll have to adjust exactly how far the horizontal position can go. So if we click back on the horizontal position, we may actually want to make the scale a little bit different. So we can make it say negative 60 as its minimum to positive 60 as its maximum. And now, if we go back, we can see that we're moving a smaller distance altogether. We can make it even smaller. So let's bring it down here to negative 20. That's the initialization point. And the smallest point is now negative 20. And the largest point is now positive 20. So now we've got a bit more of a slow moving, not wide range of motion uh, line. Now you can obviously, if you would like, do something more advanced or more creative than just a line going across the screen, but it's a tutorial, so we'll just kind of stick with the basics. Um, now once again, now that it's going a little bit slower, maybe we want to increase the exact speed so this becomes very, very useful, I would say, in terms of using this program, because if you're in the rehearsal hall, or you're using this specific studio, you can actually just be set up here and be making these changes as you're designing your show. One of the uses of this studio is that you can actually design a lot uh, right before you go in to the actual theater itself, if you're performing in a theater. So. As you design here, you get a good sense of what, exactly what you need. Since the percentages are more or less the same, when you go into the theater, it's not a huge difference. And if it is, it's just simply a matter of making minor adjustments and everything goes a lot faster. So that is essentially the basics of animation. And what I'm gonna do is, in the next tutorial, take you through a couple, also pretty basic, but other animations that I've just built and I'll show you how they work.